Okay, so I sell most of my golf balls on eBay, right? Um, I sell some of them to local people, some people I know. I sell all of the craft balls to local people for really cheap. But the vast majority of my golf balls I, uh, you know, I sell on eBay. It's always easiest and fastest that way. And it's real simple. Once you have everything packaged up, ready to go, it really takes 5-10 minutes every day, and that's it. And so... That's how I do it. But eBay and PayPal, they charge about 15% total of your fees, you know, of whatever you sell, including shipping costs. So it really kind of adds up. And so I try to sell golf balls to uh, local people and so I don't have to go through eBay because, you know, 15%, you know, adds up. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into how much golf balls and how much money I go through, but 15 percent is a lot. And so I've been on eBay for, you know, quite a while, five, six, seven years, and, uh, well, I take that back, it's been longer than that, probably eight or nine years. Yeah, probably ever since middle school. Yeah, wow. And so, uh, and so one time on eBay, you know, you always get random people messaging you on eBay asking for deals, asking for this or that, and, you know, it's just kind of like spam. But one time, I had this guy who messaged me on uh, on eBay, and he asked, can I buy all of your Pro V1s, my Titleist Pro V1s, which is the most popular and most expensive golf ball at the time. And, um, and usually things... You know, messages like that, they, they want these cheap golf balls. You know, they just want like a 50% discount to buy them all. You know, it's just kind of wasting my time. And usually I don't respond, but uh, but not this time. So I, I message him back. I'm like, sure, what type of deal are you are you wanting to do? And, uh, and I forgot all that happened, but he we started messaging back and forth, and we kind of agreed upon you know, a range of price and like numbers and quantity and stuff. And then he wants me to call him. And uh, he gives me his phone number and it's uh, and it's a it's a phone number, a foreign phone number, a phone number in Mexico, you know, and uh, it's already not looking good. And I could tell he had broken English. It wasn't really perfect English, you know, not, I'm not talking about grammar. I'm talking about like words and uh and so, you know, I continue talking to this guy, and I tell him that I can't call him because I don't, uh, I don't have, I don't know, what is that called, long, it's not called long distance, but it's called whatever, whatever service to call another country. I don't have that. And so I tell him that he's going to have to call me. And, uh, and so we set up a time, and, uh, and whenever that time comes, I get a phone call from this guy, and it's him and his brother, because the guy that I've been talking to, he doesn't know English. He's he just speaks Spanish. But his brother speaks Spanish, obviously, and then his he also speaks a little bit of English. And so I talked to so it was a uh, a conference call, and so I talked to his brother who talked to the guy that I was going to sell the golf balls to. Right? You know, it's already kind of complicated. You know. And so uh, we talk and we we agree and we we kind of go in circles, right? Because you know it takes a while to even talk, and then he he's trying to get the best deal, and I'm telling the guy, I'm like, look, I already get a good price on these golf balls. If you if you really want this many golf balls and uh, this quality of golf ball, it's gonna at least need to be you know this price, right? And he, he tries to, like, talk about other brands and this and that and all these prizes. I'm like, look, man, uh, I'm not trying to be rude. You know, it's just if you want this, this is what I can do. And uh, we eventually we agree upon a price, right? And, I, and I'm nice to the guy. I don't know if I just kind of sound like I was nice, but I was very courteous to him. And so, and so, you, so he did not want to do transactions through eBay, Right, and so we're still going downhill. It's looking worse and worse. He wanted to go outside of eBay, and uh, and he wanted to buy. I forgot what the first quantity was. It was like two or three thousand Titleist Pro Vs, which is you know a good good amount. And uh, 
And so he wanted to make the first transaction in person. What? <laughs> in person, because he wanted to see the golf balls first, because he doesn't know who I am. And he wanted to make sure that I was genuine, I was authentic, and that the product was, you know, what I said it was. And so he wants, so, so he wants to meet at the, at the Mexico border and look at these golf balls before I sell them, or before he buys them, right? We're already looking pretty bad now. And so, uh, and so we, we've been talking for weeks now. You know, and uh, it's kind of enticing on my side because I skip, you know, eBay and PayPal fees. I get rid of like thousands of golf balls and he's paying in cash, you know, cash is king. And, uh, you know, and it's just, you know, it, it's it's good. And, you know, I kind of want to make it work. And he seemed like he wants to make it work. And they seem to be genuine. You know, I mean, obviously it sounds like he's a rapist or a kidnapper or whatever and maybe he is you know I don't know but he didn't sound like it he, he sounded to be genuine and so I go through with it and uh, he wants to meet at uh, so I'm at commerce at the time where I went to school and uh, I have like a, a storage building there and I store a lot of my golf balls in and so he wants to know how many I have and I go and I count them all and it was like I don't know, two or three thousand of just the Tylus Pro Vs. And um, so we agree on a quantity, we agree on a price, we agree on a time to meet, and we agree on a place and a location. And uh, in this place was right on the border. I'm talking a stone's throw away and you're in Mexico. I'm not even exaggerating. I, I forgot what this, I mean, I guess I should have looked it up before I made this video but it was like eagles point or or something and it was technically in the usa you know i didn't cross the border they had to cross the border you know go through a point of entry or whatnot and so and so i i load my truck i drive a ford ranger and it's like a seven hour drive there and so i load up my truck with all these boxes and uh I, you know i fill them with all the golf balls and i go and i meet them and so I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving, and it's like seven hours, right? And it takes a while. And I go, I go through like Houston or something. A lot of traffic. And as I'm getting to the border, maybe about 100 miles to the border, you know, the scenery and the environment starts to change. You know, it starts to become a lot more deserty, desert you know, drier and just like country land, right? For like cattle or cactuses cacti you know whatever it is and things start to become like sparse you know you don't really see as many people you know and i'm going to meet these guys from mexico you know and so um so i eventually keep going and then i start seeing like border patrol and like ice agents you know parked on the side of the road and like driving back and forth and stuff and you know i i've never been to the border and I've never seen stuff like that. And so I was kind of spooked out, you know, for the first time. You know, I, I'm alone. Um, you know, I'm a white male, you know, in prime time, you know, age and stuff. So maybe there's a high price, a high bounty on my head. I don't know. So I start getting a little nervous. You know, I don't know what to expect. And so I eventually, you know, get, we, we're going to meet at a Walmart, right? And um, I get there like 15 minutes early or something like that. And uh, I get out and I go inside the Walmart. And um, I was taken back. You know, usually, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a white male. I usually fit in everywhere, you know. And, but not this place. This place was probably 99% Hispanic people. You know, everyone spoke Spanish. And I just felt out of my element. And it was just kind of, it was just kind of eye-opening, you know, to go through something like that. I, you know, I walked through Walmart trying to kill time, and everyone kept looking at me, kind of funny and weird. And I don't know if they were just looking at me normal, and I just kind of felt out of place. And so I thought any look in my direction was them looking at me funny. I don't know, but I definitely felt, you know, a certain type of way. And um, 
you know, it just was kind of eye-opening, you know, because a lot of people go through that, you know, foreigners come to the U.S., you know, um, it was just kind of eye-opening, you know, and so, you know, even, even walking through the Walmart, you know, there's like a bank, and they always try to get you to sign up for a, for a bank account, and they're like, talking to you in Spanish, and you're like, no, <laughs> so, but anyway, so they get to the Walmart, they call me, and I meet them, like, in the front of the Walmart, these two, um, you know, Hispanic guys, and one's kind of a short guy who only speaks Spanish, and then he brought his taller brother who speaks broken English, and then also Spanish, and so, you know, I tell him, hi, welcome to the USA, and then, uh, you know, so we, we walk to my truck. <laughs> so we walk to my truck, and, you know, I have all these boxes of, uh, of these premium golf balls back there. And um, I show them where I'm parked, and then they say that they're going to go get their car and then drive up. And, uh, and they pull up in an Audi, you know, a nice, I mean, a nice car. And so, you know, it's probably looking a little bit worse now. But, uh, but these guys, they were nice guys, and so, uh, and so they get out, and I show them the golf balls, all the boxes and stuff, and I tell them to take your time, go through them as thorough as you want, um, you know, just so that they're comfortable, and they take probably five or six minutes, and they go through, not every box, but most of the boxes, and they finally say, yeah, man, it's pretty good, and so, and so they pay in cash. Uh, you know, we load up the boxes, and then they had, you know, cash that they were going to pay with. And, you know, not pesos or anything, American money. And, um, you know, I have no idea if this is fake money or authentic money or anything like that. And so guess what I did? This is big brain. This is big brain. So, so before we finished the transaction, what we did was before I got to the place, I went and I looked up what banks were there in the area and I signed up for a you know a free checking account or whatever it was and so whenever we made the transaction whenever they went to pay we went to the bank and I just deposited the money so I knew it was real that's big thinking right there and so uh, and so I got paid they got the golf balls and then all was good they said thank you and I told them thank you and uh, and then they left. And it actually, it honestly was a pleasant experience. I had a good time doing it. And uh, and this was probably, you know, it's 2020 right now. This is probably 2016, maybe 2015, not 2015, maybe 2017. And so I sold them, you know, two or 3,000 golf balls that day. And then every year after that, I sold him bulk Tylus Pro V1s. You know, the same deal over and over. And what I would do was, I, didn't, I never met him again, but there was, he had a friend in Houston who had some sort of business where he drove like a caravan across the border and uh, delivered items and stuff. And I don't know, I, I don't know if it was legal or illegal or, or what happened, but, uh, but the guy from Mexico, he prepaid me uh, through a Walmart money order. And then I went and I got the money, got the cash, and then I mailed my Tylus Pro V1s to this guy in Houston. And that guy in Houston, whenever he would go to Mexico in the caravan, he would take the golf balls, you know, all the boxes and stuff with him, and then he would deliver the product. And it would be a couple of weeks, and, um, and then he would eventually get them, and he would tell me that he was happy with them, and, that, you know, and then he'd thank me for them. And this happened for like two or three years, and that's how I got rid of the most of my Tylus Pro V1s, is just like that. I wholesaled them to a guy in Mexico, and um, you know, and this was a this is a real story, you know. Um, and, you know, there at the beginning, you know, it was kind of shady, and you know, I didn't really know what to expect, but uh, you know, I I went with it, and. Uh, and that's how it happened, and and it was a good experience. I had a good time doing it. I thought it was uh, really fun to ship my golf ball. I mean, to be able to tell people I ship, 
my most expensive golf balls to a wholesaler in Mexico. So I thought that was kind of cool.